In today's class, we will learn how to use a transistor as a switch. So let's suppose that I want to switch a load. My load is now shown here in the circuit as a resistor RL. I have chosen a resistance of 50 ohms and I want to control the current that flows through this load. And the control that I will do will be done in such a way that the current will either be on or it will be off. So I'm not looking for a continuous control of the current, but I'm looking for on-off control. Now my load is powered from voltage supply V2 and I have chosen 5 volts for my simulation. The current that is flowing through the load is coming from voltage supply V2, flows like this in the circuit and then it's flowing through transistor Q1 and then back into ground of my voltage supply. You can note that uh, in my case the grounds are common for voltage supply V2 and for signal generator V1. The transistor that I will use to switch the load is Q1 and we will later take a look on the datasheet of this transistor. The signal coming from this signal generator V1 will switch the transistor on and off. I have chosen the following parameters of my signal. Uh, I have chosen that the initial value of my voltage will be 0 volts and that the amplitude of my signal will be 5 volts and I have chosen that the frequency of my signal is 1 kilohertz in other words the period is 1 millisecond and the duty cycle will be 50 percent so the pulse width is 500 microseconds. Before we run the simulation let's take a look on the parameters of our transistor. I have chosen transistor BSS123 and uh, here we have its datasheet. So we can read from the datasheet that this is an N-channel MOSFET transistor. Here we can see the package and here we can see the internal connections. Now this transistor is a surface mounted device so it's mounted directly on the printed circuit boards without any through holes and we can see that here we have the gate terminal, drain terminal and source terminal. And in the schematic symbol you can know that there is this switch, this transistor, this N-channel MOSFET, but there is also this diode and we will talk today also about the purpose of this diode and uh, what properties does it have. Let's study further the properties of our transistor. Now we can see here the main features. We can see that uh, if I use a gate source voltage of 4.5 volts, then the RDS on is uh, 10 ohms. Now in my simulation I will not use 4.5 volts, although I could do that. I will use 5 volts, which is a more standard voltage in electrical circuits. And uh, therefore I can expect that uh, the RDS on will be slightly smaller. We can see that uh, for VGS of uh, 10 volts it's about 6 ohms. So it will be somewhere between 6 and 10 ohms, maybe a little bit closer to the 10 ohms. We could of course read the real value of RDS on uh, in the characteristics that uh, we can find in this, uh, this datasheet. You can see here that in the datasheet they give us the uh, on region characteristics. So if I'm using 5 volts I will be somewhere here when the transistor is off and then dependent on my value of the current I will move along the, those curves based on my VGS voltage. So we can see that this transistor is uh, suitable for my application. It has a continuous drain current of uh, 170 milliamps in my application I will be switching uh, much smaller currents 
So uh, for this reason, I have chosen that particular transistor. Uh, let's go back to the simulation and let's uh, prepare it for running. So here we have the voltage supply V1 with this frequency, period 1 millisecond and voltage of 5 volts. And uh, I will just set the probes that I need in my circuit. So I will have a probe here on uh, the gate voltage. This will be called VG. I will have a voltage probe on VDS. Here, this is this terminal. And uh, therefore I will see the voltage that is on the drain source terminals of my transistor. And then I will have a probe here at this terminal that will show me the current that actually flows in the transistor. So let's set the simulation. We will run the transient response analysis. And since my signal is uh, with frequency of uh, 1 kilohertz, this means period of my signal is uh, 1 millisecond, I want to see two periods of my signal. So therefore, I will use 2 millisecond stop time. And I don't need a much fine step. So here I will use 100 microseconds of step size. Now let's run the simulation and uh, let's see our results. So what do we see here? All will be rectangular signals. Now in blue we see this is my gate source voltage. So this is the signal that turns on the transistor. So when the voltage is above the threshold voltage of my transistor, then the transistor will be on. So when VGS is 5 volts, transistor is on. When VGS is 0 volts, transistor is off. In black, we can see the current that flows through the transistor. We can see that now it's about 89 milliamps when the transistor is on. And here we can see it's a very small current. Uh, it's a basically zero current. So when the transistor is on, the current is limited by two resistances that we have in the circuit. One is my 50 ohm resistor here, and the other one is the RDS on of my transistor. So if this would be an ideal transistor, the RDS on would be zero, and my current through a 50 ohm resistor from a 5 volt power supply would be equal to 100 milliamps. But since this is a little bit less than 10 ohms, we have about 10 ohms in the transistor plus 50 ohms of my resistance and therefore my current is smaller and it's 89 milliamps. So from this current we could also calculate the RDS on that we have in our circuit. And the last trace we see in the simulation, the green one, is uh, the voltage VDS. So this is the voltage that we have here on the drain source terminals of our transistor. And we can see that there is a voltage drop of about 553 millivolts on the transistor, so quite large. And this is uh, when the transistor is on. And when the transistor is off, we have the full voltage on the transistor which equals to 5 volts. So when transistor is on, we have 89 milliamps times 533 millivolts. This would give us the losses that we have on the transistor. And uh, here when the transistor is off, we have 5 volts, but we have virtually zero current. So there will be no losses or very, very small losses. Uh, when the transistor is off. Uh, we can see that this is a nice rectangular signal and uh, that um, it works very nicely. Uh, let us uh, now change the schematic and uh, let's assume that now this is not a pure resistive load but uh, that this load will have also some inductance. For example, it could be a coil of a relay. 
So I will now erase this uh, wire between the load and the transistor and I will add a load that will have some inductance. So this is my inductance and uh, I will run this simulation with some real parameters of a relay. So let's open a data sheet of uh, some relay and uh, let's see what are the parameters. So for no reason at all I have chosen this particular relay. It is a relay that uh, allows you to switch uh, higher voltages so you can turn on a light with that you could uh, turn on the heater with that, for example. Uh, we can see the parameters of this coil. So let's see, I will use uh, the parameters for a 5 volt relay. And that's the reason why I have chosen 5 volts in my simulation. So we have 5 volts coil. We can see that it has a coil resistance of 50 ohms. And uh, here we can see the coil inductance. We can see that the coil inductance is uh, dependent whether the armature is off or on. But in general, uh, the uh, coil inductance for this relay is somewhere around uh, around uh, 100 millihenry. So this is the value in Henry. So let's assume that in our simulation we will use the average value which is 100 millihenry. So let's uh, add this in the simulation. So this will be 100 millihenry. It's a quite large inductance. Uh, we will have to add our probe on our voltage VDS. I will just uh, rename this uh, to be called VDS so that we have it in the circuit and uh, we have the same probes. We have VGS, we have VDS and we have a current through the transistor. Uh, now what I need to do is that I need to in decrease my frequency of my signal because since now I'm switching a relay, now a relay normally is switched with a significantly smaller frequency it will be at maximum at uh, some order of hertz, maybe not even order of hertz. And uh, we will want to focus our attention on the time interval when we are switching off this voltage. So when we are switching off this transistor. So what I will do is that I will set a significant pulse weight, so let's say 0 0.5 seconds, I will use a period of one second but since I want to focus only at the moment where I turn off the transistor I will reverse the initial and pulse voltage so I will use initially 5 volts and then voltage 0 so initially the current will be on and then I will turn it off and I want to see the transition between on and off. So I will use a delay time of let's say one microsecond. And uh, I will keep the other parameters. So I'm interested only in the time that is happening around one microsecond and a little bit beyond that time. So I will confirm this selection for the voltage supply for my generator. And now I need to set other parameters for my transient response. So let's say I want to see only the response of the first approximately 10 microseconds. But now I want uh, to see the detail. So I will use a time step of uh, 10 nanoseconds. We run the simulation. And uh, let's see what happens in our circuit. So this is my detail of my turn off event. Uh, in black we can see the current. The current now here it was on until one microsecond. So here we see 89 milliamps, the same current. Here the transistor is turning off. 
so the current is slowly decreasing we can see that it's going beyond zero we see a negative current I'll explain you in few minutes what this means and uh, here we can see that this is my voltage VG now it's zero the transistor should be off but now let's see this green curve this green curve is my voltage VDS that we have here on the drain source terminal and we can see that there is a very large voltage that we have on VDS in the simulation it goes all the way up to let's say 7 kilovolts so it's a very very large voltage but it's also very short you can see it starts at 1 microsecond and it lasts up to 4.3 microseconds approximately so it's about 3 microseconds wide but the peak has a very very large amplitude so if I would keep this circuit like I have it it would destroy the transistor because the voltage VDS needs to be limited if I take a look on my data sheet for my transistor we can see that the absolute maximum drain to source voltage is 100 volts and uh, in the simulation we found out that we have about 7 kilovolts now in reality the voltage voltage peak will be smaller but it still might be a few hundred volts now in simulation we are not simulating other parasitic effects in the circuit such as uh, capacities such as uh, inductances that we have everywhere else in the circuit but uh, the real voltage that you would measure on the oscilloscope can easily be a few hundred volts so it can destroy the transistor uh, for this reason we need to connect something in parallel to our load there are several options what you can actually connect uh, I will connect uh, the Schottky diode so uh, let's see uh, what we can connect in the circuit we can connect uh, a normal diode we can connect a Schottky diode uh, from the simulation here we have seen that uh, the the, the spike that we have in the circuit is uh, very large but it's also very short and for this reason we need a diode that uh, can react very quickly so this will be a short key diode and this diode is connected always in parallel to the load like this and it is called a flywheel diode and this diode will remove the problem that we have here with the voltage now why do we have this problem with the voltage now, the reason is simple this is an RL circuit when we have done analysis of transient circuits transient responses in a circuit you have found out that uh, you cannot switch on and off rapidly the current in an RL circuit in other words the circuit has some inertia so if you turn it off very quickly with a transistor the inductor has some energy that is stored in the magnetic field and this energy tries to push the current through so it will increase the voltage to keep the current flowing so for this reason we add this flywheel diode in parallel to the load when the transistor is on this diode has no effect the current is flowing like this here we have a positive terminal and here we have a negative terminal so the diode is reversed biased but when we turn off this transistor then the current will flow like that in the circuit and will dissipate the energy that is stored in the magnetic field of our inductor so now let's run the simulation with the same parameters and let's see what effect will that have so the simulation is finished now let's see what happened in our circuit in blue we still have the 
VGS voltage, so this is our signal that turns on the transistor. When this voltage is at 5 volts, we see that the transistor is on, current is flowing, we still have 89 milliamps. And uh, when the transistor is off, VG is 0, and uh, the current is uh, virtually 0. You can see it's a little bit fluctuating in the simulation, but this is due to the time step that I have chosen for the simulation. And in green, we have the VVS voltage. When the transistor is on, we still have about 533 millivolts of voltage drop. Here, the transistor is off, we have the full voltage in our circuit, a little bit above the, uh, the 5 volts, but we don't see any voltage spike. Here, we have a nice voltage, and uh, there is no voltage spike that would destroy the transistor. Now, the diode is not the only option that we have if we want to suppress the spikes on VES. Uh, there are other options as well. Now this voltage might be suppressed by an RC circuit. So instead of a diode, we may replace it with an RC circuit. We may also replace it with uh, a diode and a Zener diode as well. So now you will be given the assignment from your lab teacher and uh, you will simulate the different attenuators, different circuits here in place of diode D1 and you will see their effects. Another point that I would like to stress out is the reverse recovery current. In order to show you in simulation how this works, I have removed the diode again in my circuit. So now there is no flywheel diode connected in parallel to my load. I have kept the parameters of my load and also the parameters of my signal generator. Now I will run the simulation for 20 microseconds so that we see what happens with the current and the step size will be fairly small. I have chosen 5 nanoseconds. So if you run the simulation you will see the following result. Here in blue we have the VGS voltage so here the transistor is on, current is flowing, we have our 89 milliamps. Here the transistor is off, we can see how it is switching. So here the current is decreasing, but surprisingly the current is not stopping at zero, which is here, but we have negative current, and we have a negative current that flows in our circuit. So this means that uh, the current now flows like this. It flows in the opposite direction in our load. And uh, we can see what happens with the value. Now the current is decreasing. It's decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. And uh, if we would uh, run the simulation for longer, we would see that it would go all the way to zero. And then the transistor would be really off. Now this is a typical effect in real-world transistors. It's called reverse recovery current and it means that the transistor cannot turn off the current at in zero time and initially the current will be negative and then this uh, current will go to zero. Now it's related with the internal construction of the transistor and uh, it's related also with the material. It is related also uh, with uh, the way the majority and minority carriers are moving in the transistor. But anyway, this is a typical property of uh, silicon-based transistors. So remember that for a short period of time, dependent on your transistor and on your load, the current can be negative and only when this reverse recovery time is uh, over, then uh, the current will switch to zero. So now let's uh, run your simulations with the flywheel diode and with other circuits and you will analyze the properties of our switching circuit.